Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now I've done a couple of videos on painting American vehicles before, but have concentrated largely on tanks. So what I've got in front of me today is one of the M3 half tracks with this funky canvas cover. Now this fella here is a 3D print, he's come off of my Mars 3, and he is courtesy of Night Sky Miniatures. Now I've backed a few of their Kickstarters before, uh, the Kickstarter for the uh, half tracks and what have you, Wheels of War, is coming up soon. So I'll make sure there is a link to the description for that one. Uh, Matt at Night Sky very kindly let me have a couple of the half tracks to play around with, and I thought, ambulance. You never see ambulances on the table. Um, in bolt action terms, they're not really amazing, but I think they look cool. So this is going to be pretty useful whether you are painting jeeps, half tracks, even tanks. And uh, yeah, follow along. All of the paints for this one will be in the description. All right, so first things first, once you've got your miniature assembled, whether it be a print as in this case, or a plastic or other resin kit, first thing to do is to prime it. Now here I have used US Olive Drab from Vallejo. Um, if you can't get this, then something like, uh, what is it, Death Guard Green from uh, Citadel is actually quite useful too. Army Green from the Army Painter will give you a nice middling green finish to start from. Um, if you can't get your hands on this particular primer, you're still going to need a US Olive Drab in the little bottle. So I'll pop that in the description to remind you, add it to a shopping list if you haven't got it. Uh, but if you can get this primer, it's magic because that's <laughs> that's the hard work done. American vehicles, pff, it it's that green. You know, cannot go wrong here. So while you might find that you need to apply the green to the vehicle itself, I don't have to in this instance, so my first color I'm going to apply is going to be for the canvas. And uh, I'm actually using canvas. <laughs> this is from the Vallejo Panzer Aces line. And uh, anywhere that you can get your hands on Vallejo stuff, you should be able to pick this up. Um, I order most of my stuff online because I live in the middle of nowhere. So it doesn't bother me all that much if my local store is a half hour drive away. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah bunch of wonderful online stores still provide. Um, if you can't get this, then Venom Worm from the Army Painter is fairly close. Uh, don't worry too much, you know, don't get hung up on the color of canvas. Um, this canvas color is actually pretty much spot on, but anything will do here. Khaki or a middling green. Um, all the same, you may find it takes a couple of coats. Um, I have thinned this down with just a wee touch of water in it to make sure that it will flow smoothly. But yeah, go ahead over the canvas, applying canvas. Once this had some time to settle and dry, now that is two coats. It's important that you're going to get that solid base coat now, because what we're going to do next is to shade the whole thing. What I have in my little palette here, this is 10 drops of Strong Tone from the Army Painter. Now you can use Agrax Earthshade for this. Um, I just like Strong Tone for military vehicles. It has a slightly darker, uh, it's not quite as warm as Agrax Earthshade, if that makes sense, and I prefer it. Uh, but rather than using it neat, we're actually going to mix in a little bit of water. So for 10 drops of Strong Tone, I'm going to add one, two, three, four, five drops of water. Uh, get yourself some little bottles. Um, I got a bag of 50 of these dropper bottles from Amazon for just a couple of dollars. Totally worth it. I thoroughly recommend getting your hands on some of these just for being able to mix stuff up that precisely. Now, the main reason for thinning it isn't so much to get rid of the strength of the color. It's actually to make it flow a little bit more easily. Uh, but once you've mixed it all together, we're going to get our nice big flat brush here and just start painting it across everything. You'll see here it's not quite 100% dry in the recesses there. Um, when you're applying it, you'll see that it does go a little bit bibbly. Um, technical term there. Uh, that is the water that's in there. It kind of breaks up that uh, surface tension and stops it sticking. Um, if you don't want that bibbly effect, once you've applied a layer of it, leave it for maybe 20-30 seconds, then come back and just flick across it with your brush again. It will be fine. The grimy bit is going to be the canvas cover here. You'll see uh, just by virtue of the shape of it, it doesn't tend to take 
uh, that sheet terribly well at all. But don't worry, because trust the process, we're going to fix that up now. So what I've got in my hand here is a big soft makeup brush. Uh, grab yourself a set of these from Amazon or wherever. A nice cheap set of them is perfect for all sorts of things. I'm going to go ahead and load it up with a little bit of khaki. And yeah, terribly carefully here, you'll see. Just start basically covering over most of that canvas. Uh, areas where the shade has settled a little bit funky, you can concentrate on. Pass over them a few times to build up that color. And yeah, it's not so much dry brushing as it is over brushing. So you're going to need to refill your, your brush occasionally. As you see, passing over that area three or four times in a row, we start to build up that color. It looks nice and natural. So I'm now going to spend that time doing that over all of the canvas cover. Let's get a look at that. You will find, because you are dry brushing a 3D printed miniature, you're going to get some areas where you get a little bit of those layer lines showing through. Instead of leaving the dry brush, just picking those up, what you can do, get a little bit of khaki on your brush and just spend a bit more time filling that area in so it doesn't stand out quite so prominently. Now I've dry brushed that until it is mostly khaki, and that's looking pretty good. I am going to touch up some of these bits a little bit later on with yet another dry brush, but we've got another dry brush to apply now to the vehicle itself. So I'm using again, nice soft uh, makeup brush. What I've got is actually Nurgling Green from Citadel. This is one of their dry paints, and you want to go quite light on this when you first start applying it. You see, as I catch the uh, rivets and what have you, get a nice sharp green line there. Um, if you're a little concerned about how much you might leave behind, best place to start dry brushing is on the tracks and wheel sections, uh, because those we're going to make a big mess of those later on anyway, so it doesn't matter too much if you apply too much green here. And then with some Terminata stone, I'm going to very lightly pick out the extreme edges and creases in the canvas. Okay, now I'm going to set this down. And what I want now is some masking tape. Now I'm actually going to use, this is just house painting tape. Uh, it's that papery stuff that isn't particularly sticky. Uh, you can go ahead and get yourself some real swish, you know, Tamiya masking tape, but you do not need to. This you can pick up from the, the hardware aisle and uh, it will do the job just fine. So I'm going to stick that down first of all. Uh, pay attention to where the rivets are on these things. It'll help you sort of key in what shape you want. The shape I'm looking for is square, funnily enough. And then once you've got your tape flattened out, grab yourself some white or off-white is what I'm using here. And I am going to apply a couple of thin coats of this. You'll see we're obviously not going to get a perfect uh, white on the first pass. Now once you're satisfied with the solidity of that white, um, I have done four coats here, uh, it's time to swap on to a red. Now I'm using flat red here from Vallejo, but any red will do. Now again here you're looking to use essentially landmarks on that square, so I'm aiming between, uh, what do you call them, rivets, just to bulk out this first line. And then, I'm not finished with that, but I want to get an idea for the other position here. So across, and uh, oh, that's going to be a bit cack handed. Uh, this is going to be easier for you if you've not got a camera in the way, of course, as I'm always fond of pointing out. And uh, don't worry, as you go, you can build there, build out that line over time. And if you make any mistakes, you can go back to your white and tidy up. Now, are, are you ready for the moment of truth? Because I certainly am not. Let's uh, peel off our... Oh, let's peel off our tape. You see, I shouldn't have been so cocky, because what I've done is now peeled off the shade that we'd applied Whoops! Now there's a couple of ways that we can fix this. Uh, first of all would be to have probably used either a varnish or something over the areas that we were going to do that to. 
Um, we could also do a quick dry brush maybe of the US uh, Olive Drab. But what I've got is just a little bit of that shade mix again. And what I'm going to do is just paint that back over that area to dull it down a little bit. And the, uh, the slight overlap I'm going to get, not too worried about. Because once we apply our uh, weathering, it's going to all but disappear. Now after that little cleanup, that is still a bit patchy, uh, but I'm not too fussed. I am going to fix that up later on. Um, yeah, just something to be aware of. Don't necessarily follow me straight along as though I know what I'm doing at all times. <laughs> what I'm going to use now, this is German Grey. And I'm going to paint the wheels, uh, the heads of any equipment on the sides of the half track, and the tracks with this. Uh, you can thin this down quite a bit, and it will still cover relatively well. But yep, away we go with this stuff now. And then if you've got any, you can apply your decals. Now you want to make sure that you're doing this before you do any weathering, uh, because if you do your weathering and then apply these afterwards, they're going to look pristine and clean and very strange. So on we go with the decals now. Now that's using an absolute ton of microsole on the front there to make sure that that uh, star sits properly on the hood. Uh, but as that dries, we can carry on painting some of the other details. What I've got is beige brown, and let's just get that in shot. Let's start painting in the handles on the wooden details. And to be quite honest, past this point, we are almost finished. Now comes my favorite part. I love doing this. I've got here a little bit of packing foam that I've folded over a couple of times, so I've got a nice rough edge. And I'm going to dip that into some German camo black brown. Dab most of that off onto a bit of paper. And then very lightly, let's pick an area where it doesn't matter if I uh, go a little overboard. Let's start at the back here and gently dab on just some random scratches, dings. So places like hinges, handles, uh, just lightly ding that with a little bit of this brown. Uh, and you can also do this pretty much everywhere. So areas where you might have gone a little bit overboard with the white or what have you. Just along the bottom, you know, as I've caught uh, tree branches or undergrowth as it's going across the landscape. As much or as little of this as you like. Now it is very easy to go overboard, so when you're first doing it, add very little and then sort of take your miniature and look at it from arm's length occasionally. Uh, but once you get your eye in, you can have a bit of fun with this. Now grab yourself a pencil. What I've got here, this is a B, um, although a nice softer pencil will also work. What I'm going to do is just run it along the edges of some of the areas where I have added those scratches. The more of this that you go back and forth with, uh, the brighter and sharper the edge will be. So don't do this over all of your uh, scratches, but in just a few places where you want that ding to look relatively fresh, or like it's going to see a lot of uh, passage over it. Just a few passes with the pencil. As well, on the tracks, easy as that. And then finally, I'm going to do a couple of very light dry brushes. I'm going to start with brown sand. Nice big soft brush. And uh, let's get most of that off onto a bit of kitchen towel. And as always, pick somewhere where it's not going to matter if you overdo it. You see on the butt here, I'm leaving barely anything behind. What I'm going to do is just very lightly, almost stipple rather than dry brush. And I want a dusty, worn sort of road appearance to some of these areas. I'm going to concentrate particularly on the tires and the tracks. Um, but I've done road dust in quite a few videos. Um, if you want a wetter, grimier finish to start off with, what you can do is begin with uh, flat earth instead and don't take quite so much off of the brush as you start applying it as I have here. Uh, but just lightly, over and over, same as with most dry brushing, build up that color. And then same thing again with some dark sand, which is the slightly lighter version. And uh, you'll see I'm really concentrating more towards the top areas, 
uh, places where this drier dust is more likely to collect. Just adding a bit of visual interest to some of these areas. Now once this is done, what I'm going to do, take them outside, hit it with a matte varnish, and uh, yeah, that'll be ready to rock and roll. So let's get a look, once I've got the dust on the wheels here, what this all looks like once it is finished. And so there at last, our M3 half-track ambulance is complete. Now this same method would work for pretty much anything American you want to put in the field. Uh, and like I mentioned, I really wanted to do an ambulance because you just don't see them. Uh, gosh, that, that red cross is pretty cack uh, Obviously, if you are looking to spend a little bit more time on it, or just grab some decals or water slide transfers, you're going to have a bit of time of it. Um, save yourself the hassle. It can be done, as you can see, but uh, why make the work if you can find something that'll do it for you? So thanks again to Matt at Night Sky Miniatures for letting me have the STLs to, to print this fella off. Um, I've wanted an ambulance for ages, so this was a really good excuse to, to paint one up for the channel and add it to my collection. So thank you very much, Matt. As well, thank you very much again to Exit23 Games for all of the light and sound equipment, as well as my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue. And resin, importantly, <laughs> including my gorgeous producers who are showing up on screen now. You folks are the ones who keep me doing what I'm doing. I really mean it, folks. Thank you. Now, any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked down there too. So, thank you very much for your time on and all. And you all enjoy the rest of your day.